Welcome back, Guardians. In this report, we plan on tackling a few pieces of recently revealed information and provide speculative responses on why the last city has seemingly fallen or is under siege. But to do that, we have to understand where we are in Destiny's current story arc. There are unfixed plot holes, unresolved issues, and a whole lot of potential. Now to explain everything in the story so far, it will be brief and quick, so if I pass any points or explain something too quickly, feel free to add it in the comment section or send me a message. I don't know everything and I'm always learning. Let's start with the main enemies in the current universe. We have the Vex, the Fallen, the Hive, or Taken, depending on your interpretation, and the Cabal. Some may even include the Guardian factions who vie for political control of the last city as main enemies as well. They are the Future War Cult, New Monarchy, and Dead Orbit. These three factions, along with the Vanguard who operate as the non-aligned, we have to protect the last city faction, and the Speaker, the Traveler's High Priest, make up the last city's ruling body or active government called the Consensus. But the three main factions, New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, and Future War Cult, do not play nice. And it is likely you will have to pick one of these factions as Destiny stories continue into the future. The faction representatives in The Last City even drop hints at preparation for full-scale conflict, or that they have already begun actively skirmishing with one another. Remember that before the game's storyline started with your revival as a Guardian, there was a series of conflicts known as the Faction Wars. Information on the Faction Wars is relatively sparse, but it does provide some solid backstory and also supports the narrative that the Fallen, Vex, Hive, and Cabal are not the only enemies you may face. As we move into the next game, some enemies may even be your fellow Guardians. Let's continue with the four major alien factions. With the Vex, you have the events at the Black Garden where you presumably kill the Vex God, although the term God is somewhat debatable. The Vex have a semi-condoluted story due to their ability to manifest themselves throughout time, the Vault of Glass on Venus being the junction point for their timelines. But there could be more vaults, there could be more Black Gardens, or more gods. All we know is that after the events of the Black Garden, the Vex have taken a semi-back seat in the overall storyline. They did pop up in Praetis Mission in the Taken King, but other than that, only their technology gets the most interest in recent story developments. I expect them to play a heavy role in Destiny 2. Next, we have The Fallen. The Fallen have a long history with the main Destiny storyline. First, the events of Six Fronts, then Twilight Gap, both taking place before the main player's storyline. And the events of Ascolus' House of Wolves and Axis Prime and his House of Devils reformed into Splicers. The events of the Fallen can be broken down into a few separate pieces. First, you have what I'm going to call pre-history, before the player's story takes place. Then you have the events of the House of Wolves and Skolas, the Taken War, and finally, the Sea of a Crisis. All events are largely influential on Destiny's universe, but the main takeaways are gaining a Fallen House as an ally, which would be Varix under House Judgment, the severe weakening of the Fallen Houses during the Taken War, and the modification of the House of Devils during the Siva Crisis. This all shows full well that the Fallen may finally be out of options when it comes to defeating the Guardians, or as they describe, the Dead Ones. Next, the Hive and Taken, respectively, are perhaps one of the most interesting factions we face in Destiny, as their backstory is one of the most richly developed narratives thanks to revelations in the Taken King expansion. We learned that the Hive were not always evil, and their motivations are tied to their obligations to the Worm Gods, who delivered their kind from complete annihilation on their homeworld. Typically, if some type of higher power saved you and your entire species, you'd most likely be willing to follow their every whim as repayment. The main historical points with the Hives are as follows. The failed attempt to retake the moon by the Vanguard before the player was revived, the development of the storyline of the legendary Tolan the Shattered, the ally gained in the form of Eris Morn, whose presence is only quote unquote tolerated by the Vanguard in the tower. You have the defeat of Crota and his father Oryx, the Taken King, who is most presumably the most powerful of the Hive Lords. During the Siva Crisis in the Rise of Iron expansion, the Hive take a back seat, 
This is most likely due to there being two expansions focused on them and how substantial the Taken War was on the entire Destiny universe. Finally, we have the Cabal. And this is perhaps everyone's go-to when it comes to why the city is under siege or being destroyed for Destiny 2. If the recent trailer didn't convince you that the Cabal are going to be the main antagonist for Destiny 2, the mission in the Taken King called the Outbound Signal should. To summarize, the Outbound Signal mission during the Taken King has the player intercept or at least attempt to intercept a Cabal communication to their high command outside the solar system. You have to picture the Cabal in Destiny 1 as expeditionary legions. The Cabal we see now are only a preliminary force, and it's been hinted at many times that they are part of a larger empire. There is also a theory that the forces we faced in Destiny 1 and in Destiny 2 are Cabal running from a much larger unseen threat. The curious point about the Cabal is that their motivations are murky at best. It seems that they primarily wish to secure technology and are not overtly interested in eliminating the Traveler, which is the primary point of conflict for the Hive, Fallen, and Vex. So in the trailer, we see Cade-6, our Nathan Fillion, directly engaging Cabal in what seems to be the ruins of the last city, but this raises a multitude of questions. First and foremost, where's the Traveler? The Traveler, or the large spherical object hovering over the last city, is supposed to be the main protector for humanity's last holdout, and the source of a guardian's power in the form of light. The Traveler also acts as the story's main focal point, the reason for humanity's golden age and its ultimate fall from various invasions of the factions we see today. Many treat the Traveler as a god, but the term god in the Destiny universe is thrown around a little loosely. There are many gods, and all of them seemingly mortal. In the events of the main game, the Traveler has begun healing after Guardians retrieved a shard of it from the Hive. Has it fully healed? Is there another factor forcing its inability to protect the last city? These are questions we hope to see answered. Then there's the darkness, the opposite of the light and the blanket term applied to all enemies you face in the Destiny universe. Technically, the darkness is the Fallen, Hive, Vex, and Cabal, but it can also be defined as a single entity separate from the factions, but most likely motivating them to act against you and the Traveler. There are only a few direct references to the darkness's origins or motivations in Destiny, but a unique piece of lore stands out in The Taken King. This is when Oryx, the Taken King, speaks directly to the darkness or an overt agent of the darkness in regards to his motivations. Ideally, in Destiny 2, we will learn more about the darkness, what it is, where it comes from, and how to truly defeat it. I'll briefly sum up a few characters that are important, but I've left out for the simple sake of length. You have the Nine, which are beings or a being that operate as external motivators for the events in Destiny. The Mysterious Stranger, a time-traveling XO that has unique objectives still hidden from us. And finally, the Awoken Queen, Mara Zoth, as it isn't fully explained what has happened to her or where she has gone. As we approach Destiny 2's launch, we should be privileged with more detailed information on the story, the progression of the narrative, and the plot holes left unresolved mentioned above. In the meantime, if you want more information on direct pieces of Destiny lore, I recommend you browse through the rest of the playlist linked below, or directly check out My Name is Bife and Malin Games, as they are some of the best Destiny lore-related content creators the community has to offer. Hopefully, Destiny 2 will leave us with more answers than questions. Until then, stay safe, Guardians.